All right, guys, uh, making this video today. I'm going to kind of try to keep it short. Um, I was out here the other night. We took off a couple valve springs. We had them checked. They checked out. I had talked about how I felt like we were hitting valve float. So we're checking the springs. There does seem to be a little bit of movement between the valve spring and the locator, but the machinist didn't quite agree with that movement affecting it, but there is some movement there. Um, just he thinks it's not uh, enough to move the valve spring or wiggle it around at a certain RPM. Um, now, when I'm saying like I'm hitting valve float, um, this thing would sound like somebody going full death metal on a kick drum and it wasn't like a like a backfire or a misfire it was like a consistent like almost like a kind of a i would call it like a chattering rhythm but um power would completely drop off and then i would shift and it would pick back up so if it was a fuel delivery issue, I think it would continuously be running out of fuel even when I shifted. Um, perhaps an ignition problem. And the only things I can think of at the moment, because we've changed nothing and we haven't had any issues with the MSD or the install, is the, um, the pro billets are prone to corrosion. So I might pop the cap off. And check that everything is good in there. Nothing came loose. And most importantly, nothing got corroded. Um, so, and then uh, possibly the coil. Um, uh, I've had coils do weird things. And this seems to be like an engine speed thing. Now, when I say engine speed, typically you're talking RPM. But when the engine like kind of free wheels and picks up RPM really, really fast is kind of when it does it. Um, so that's why I thought it was valve float. You figure faster engine RPM speed or getting to that speed uh, would make the spring dance around in there um, because the first time out at the track, we definitely hit whatever we were hitting a couple of times, more than a couple of times, and then um, the second time out at the track, I was anticipating the shift light better. And it's just like a split second where if I miss the shift, it'll break up or whatever it's doing it, it's doing it. So right now, we were I was thinking that it was valve float. And I checked everything out and uh, the valve springs are good. So I'm going to put this back together. And then the next thing to do is to throw in fresh plugs. These plugs have gone through a few wars tuning. I bought them back in August. And they have about 30 runs and a bunch of street miles uh, just messing with the carburetor and doing all that stuff. And um, yeah, so I don't know if these plugs are still good, but I'm going to replace them because it's cheap enough to replace the plug and start there. Because we've chased down problems with spark plugs in the past. Um, actually, uh, we completely hydrolocked an engine. When we did Project Enron, there was a passage in the carburetor that was exposed. And it just dumped fuel down the engine consistently. And even though they were brand new plugs and we let them dry out, they were junk after that. So um, who knows? Maybe it's from, you know... An overly fat tune before we kind of got things figured out and then now the spark plugs are just kind of dead or a bad spark plug it they, they could go bad um i'm gonna check the plug wires again um and then I'm, I'm probably gonna end up buying just spare distributor parts at this point um like a new cap new rotor spare coil um i have an ss blaster in there um, and again, we didn't change anything over the winter besides the rear end gear. So, uh, nothing should have in theory changed, uh, besides the, the rear end now brings in the engine RPM a lot faster. So that's where we're having that problem. I think is where 
when things come up real fast, you know, maybe it's, I know that, um, and it's been a while, but there's uh, the way that coils work. Maybe it's just the, the draw is too much. I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but the coil could be going. Um, it just, because again, under, under, we're, we're hitting this stripe at 68, 6,900. The shift light is on at that point. Um, and it doesn't do it in the top of second gear or the top of third gear because we're we're hitting the top of second top of third with the 456 gear this thing is matched up good the shift lights coming on at the big end of the track so um it's a minor minor kind of thing to be honest with you because the car still runs good we, we ran an 1158 1161 um the weather was i would call it decent the last time out it was in the 70s it was actually a fairly warm day um the air was okay, and the car kind of ran what it normally would run. Uh, for bracket racing, we hold the RPM back anyway. I usually shifted at about 6,300. So it shouldn't be an issue for bracket racing, but uh, we're going to chase this little issue down at, as it's developed. Um, it didn't do it in the fall. Um, but in a, in a short amount of time, we've put some runs in it, and, um, you know... Um, you know, the only other thing I can think of is, you know, um, the we did change the alternator pulley, uh, the diameter change, so that the way that the charging system is charging did change. I don't think that would affect the MSD. Um, but that is another variable that I literally just thought about right now. Um because it only produces 12 volts at idle, barely. And then when it starts to move, it jumps up and starts to actually charge. It's like a minimal charge at idle with the pulley setup that I got. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of what we got going on. I know it's more of a talking session, but I did mention it. And I kind of went through it. And we're just kind of... Uh, it's It's got to be something dumb and if it continues to develop then we'll we'll dig deeper and we'll we'll see what happens but again it just seems to be that one little spot where it, it like it it felt like valve flow i mean power completely fell off but it's just that one little spot if i miss the shift and that's like it um and it just seems to be at about seven thousand rpm where i have the video of the in-car camera uh, when we had it set up, and we went north of 7,300 in the past. Uh, so there's that, and really nothing has, has changed a whole lot. Obviously, we added taller valves and different springs and different rocker arms and stuff like that. Uh, so, um, you know, at this point, I think we're going to chase the ignition system. I'm going to go through the fuel system anyway, check my filters, um, uh, recheck my fuel pressure, uh, and pressure gauge. Um, I know at idle it's like five and a half, six ish. And going down the track, it doesn't drop under four. Which um, when I had the I forgot what pump I had on there, it shouldn't drop under four is what I was what it, the instructions it came with. So you figure that the carburetor needs a minimum of four to work. I uh, might need more. Um, for the engine loading speed and how it's coming in now where it wasn't as much of an issue before um just things like that again um uh i guess changing the rear end changed some of the engine characteristics as the rpm is coming up different so now we're dealing with different changes mechanically uh but either way car runs good it's not a horrible horrible thing it's just it just happens if i miss the shift which i usually shift at like 60 i got the shift light set to 6800 if i miss it just by a hair um it'll do it and it, i you know only did it it only happened twice once in the burnout box and once going down the track last time out whereas the first time we went out i was missing the shift like the one to two consistently <laughs> It was doing its thing. So we got a couple things to go through. We got another week before our first points race. 
car is pretty much ready. We're just going to lower that shift point down. We're going to run it with the air cleaner. We're going to run it through the mufflers. We're going to be bracket racing it. And usually I like to have this car somewhere closer to the 12 volt range for, its, to, for it to be as consistent. Um, and give myself, a little, give myself a little bit of wiggle room. So we'll let you go. Share, like, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. It's Copper Carlos. We'll let you guys go.